Welcome to the Sideline Report. I'm Marvin Jackson and I am back on U.S. soil after traveling to London for NFL football at Wembley as Washington and Cincinnati played to a draw. We call it a tie, but in the U.K. it is a draw. Later in the show, we'll talk some baseball and specifically the Cubs on winning their first World Series in 108 years. But first, joining me tonight are to discuss the burgundy and gold in the NFL are Alicia Bostic. And uh, Alicia's sitting in for Donna. <laughs> Alicia is also the daughter of a former hog, Jeff That's Bostic. Right. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right. And uh, also with us is Byron Dixon. And uh, thanks for joining us, Byron. He's one of the co hosts of the Flex Zone. Well, Marvin, anytime you call, I got to pick up the phone. I'm happy to be here with you. Alicia, happy to be here with you as well. So, I'm ready right. to talk football. Okay. Alicia, see, you have to pick up your phone too, like him, right? <laughs> call me. All right. Uh, NFL football in London is exciting for sure. There are fans of every team there, with local fans wearing Seahawks, Packers, Patriots jerseys. The atmosphere at Wembley was wild and electric even before the game. But there are locals there who do not know football, NFL football, as we call it. So I ask you guys, what is your opinion of the NFL bringing football to London on a regular basis, having a team there? I think it's a great idea. I think that what the NFL is trying to do is globalize the sport and obviously that we saw from the game, there's fans all over. Like you said, the, the atmosphere was electric. So mm -hmm. I think having a team there would be great. I don't know how the traveling would do and the wear and tear that it would do for the athletes being shoved on this plane for eight hours. But, you know, I yeah. think that it's a great idea. It's going to be tough. You got to think about it because it had a record crowd, 85,000, but you have to look at the logistics of it. If you get a team, people say in Jacksonville, they travel there, what division would they play, how would they travel to the West Coast teams. And let's say you pick up a playoff waivers on Thursday, they don't have a passport. How are they going to join the team if it's a home game? And what teams are going to be willingly give up their home <laughs> games to their fans, <laughs> season ticket holders and people like that, the owners? It'll be interesting to see, though. Yeah, and uh, one thing I noticed, the, uh, the younger generation there is really into American football. Uh, but the older generation, not so much. You know, they just still think football is what they play. Right. So I, I think that uh, it's going to take a few years, but um, with the younger generation that I saw, they would love to have a team in yeah, London. Definitely with the, like she said, you know, the globalization, and yeah. it's so accessible now with social media and the videos you see, YouTube. I think football is a global game. It's just about how would it work, and that's the NFL's biggest concern, amongst others, of course. All right, <laughs> and uh, what would they call the London team? <laughs> Ooh. That's a good question. That would question. be interesting. <laughs> You're going to have to come back. You're yeah, going to have to call me back on that next that show, one. and then I'll that let you know. That's a good one. <laughs> what would exactly. they call it? So um, sh how should Washington feel now, and Washington fans feel, about coming back from London with a draw? I mean, I think that everyone, I think fans and players included, they were mad. They yeah, were not yeah. happy. This was not a win and that they felt like, mm -hmm. or this was not a tie, rather, that felt like a win. This felt like a loss. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, Kirk Cousins played great. He's leading the league in, um, in completions. And then you have a 34-yard field goal that could give us the go-ahead in overtime, and oh, you miss it. Yeah. And so I think that... That's not feeling good weeks coming home. In the NFL with field goal kickers kind of oh <laughs> messing it up. Exactly. Again. <laughs> it's, it's like you have one job. Yeah. Complete it. <laughs> and Hopkins has been pretty good in the past, but you got to look at it and say, wow, you can't believe he missed it. And that's one on a clip ride back home. It's going to be tough. One thing I can say, I noticed this during the game and in pre game, the kickers were not kicking well. And I think it had to do with the turf. I don't think it had to do with wind or anything like that. I think it was the turf. And if you, you know, you all didn't notice, but at halftime, they had people out on the field, like maybe 25 guys out there plugging in holes in the turf, which I had never seen before in an NFL uh, stadium. So I think the turf might have been a little bit different from them, uh, and they didn't get their footing, maybe. That's the only thing I could say, because I even noticed it in pregame, the kickers weren't kicking well. Mm -hmm. It's a phase of the game we always yeah, forget about special exactly. teams, and it comes back to bite you. Yeah. That's right. Now Dallas is currently leading the NFC East, and uh, 
will they continue to win, and can Washington come back to, to gain that top spot in the NFC East? I mean, I think Dak Prescott is just performing like a stud. Yeah, I, there's yeah. not very many quarterbacks out there, especially rookie quarterbacks, mm -hmm. that are putting up the type of numbers that he is. And then you also have their defense. I don't see the Redskins knocking them off, but, you know, with week to week, anything is possible. Yeah. The NFC East has never won in the first half of the season. The past few years has come down to the last game. Dak is a rookie quarterback. You have Ezekiel Elliott. They're going to do something Dallas Cowboy-esque, mm -hmm. and that is probably make a mistake, whether that's putting Romo in, someone getting hurt, or Dak coming back to earth a little bit. The rest games, they still have a lot of divisional games left, and that's where you can win this division. It's not over yet, but let's see how this tie affects them, I would say, after the bye. All right, and uh, so you think Prescott, you all think Prescott can still play well in the end of the season, toward the end of the season, when it gets tougher. I mean, I've liked the Redskins defense all year. I think that our offense is going to deal with some changes now that Trent Williams is out. That was for my next four question. Games. How is that going to affect this Washington team? Anytime you lose an all pro, oh it's going to hurt. He's one of the best left tackles in the game. And the situation of why he's out is going to only frustrate the fans even more. <laughs> right. Well, I was reading today, and actually this is a suspension that happened at the beginning of the season, which was supposed to be a 10-game suspension. So after appeal was down to four, so I'm trying to look at it as a positive. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, this is going to put excess yeah. pressure on Morgan Moses. You have Ty N uh, Niseki. Niseki. Now, Niseki. He's a big guy. In. He's huge. But can he play like Trent? Right. And he's second Trent. string for a reason, yeah, guys. Yeah, right. Just saying. Right. Yeah, I think he stepped in last year with the Jets, but mm -hmm. I think it's one thing to fill in, and it's another thing to play yeah. consecutive games and perform like Trent Williams. It's going to be interesting to see how Ty plays. But in, I think the Redskins have found some decent parts. I love what Robert Kelly's done out the backfield, mm -hmm. looking great. Jordan Reed back. Hopefully he can stay healthy. He's one of the best tight ends in the game. We know that. And Garcon and Kirk Cousins seem mm -hmm. to have a good chemistry. It's just going to be about the defense. Josh mm -hmm. Norman, he didn't play very well Sunday against A.J. Green. We'll have to see what happens. A lot of penalties. I'm liking how Vernon Davis has played behind him, too. I mean, he, two great tight ends right now. Vernon is having a great year for it. somebody at his age. I think he's having a great year. It's always good to come back home. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and I think area. that's what the home cooking really helps. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break. And uh, when we return, we're going to take a special visit to FedEx Field for Washington's Fourth in Life program. And the Cubs won, so we'll discuss that too. You're watching the Sideline Report. <laughs> 